they thought the ends justified the means and that um, they would be able to improve the genetic health of the German race as they saw it and therefore they were prepared to ignore what evidence there was and there was quite a lot of it that what they were doing had no scientific basis whatsoever. Germany under the Nazi regime was a kind of two Titanic determination uh, that, uh, and consistency uh, that was the hallmark in many ways of the Nazi regime sterilized almost 300,000 of their fellow German citizens. Sterilization was carried out in Germany on a huge scale. In every medical school, surgical sterilization was taught as a standard procedure. Medical students watched films of operations and were taught to perform vasectomies and tubal ligations as if they were just routine surgery. I think the most catastrophic result of these Nazi eugenic policies was, first of all, that uh, about 3,000 people died uh, as a result of post-operative complications, having been sterilized. Secondly, that an enormous amount of psychological damage was done to the people who were sterilized. And thirdly, and perhaps not least, that it compromised the medical profession and that nobody was going to trust their own doctors at the time. Was the death rate quite high amongst women who were sterilized? Was it Pardon, was it death rate? No, it was not very high. But uh, at present, I could look it up. But at present, I can't uh, tell you how it was. It was, I th if now I, I should make an is estimate about perhaps 2% at least, but I think it was lower. The Nazis' aim was to wipe out all inherited physical diseases, such as the ones portrayed in these medical casts of real-life victims. But increasingly, Nazi doctors also targeted psychiatric patients and people with learning difficulties. This resulted in fierce arguments among the Nazi elite over what they called hereditary feeble-mindedness. Since the decision to sterilize people was often made on the basis of crude intelligence tests, Nazi party leaders from some of the backward rural areas worried that their brown-shirted farm boys would not be able to answer questions like who was Christopher Columbus and therefore might actually be sterilized and as a result of that on the quiet Nazi party members were exempted from these sterilization measures. Sterilization was authorized for such conditions as schizophrenia, alcoholism, manic depression and feeble-mindedness. Geneticists had no scientific evidence that these conditions were hereditary. I mean, they, they applied it to diseases which are not clearly uh, transmitted by single genes, such as schizophrenia. I mean, the, the child of a schizophrenic patient will not necessarily have schizophrenia. But doctors had long given up requiring hereditary evidence. Increasingly, they authorized compulsory sterilization on purely social or moral grounds. There are schizophrenic patients, uh, especially, who urgently want a child because they think uh, their marriage would be uh, better when a child was there, and who thought the child would give them new uh, 
new joy in life and improvement. And then the result was the marriage was uh, uh, rotten anyway, and the patient uh, was very unhappy because the child was loud and needed uh, help and patience and support, and they uh, were very often they were unable uh, to give the financial support to the family. And so, uh, after some time, uh, many uh, patients who had wished a child uh, did regret that. There was no justification whatever for sterilizing these people. And I think geneticists or medical people in Germany must have misled the regime in claiming that these, these were hereditary conditions. The sterilization law had been based on the idea that diseases are passed directly from one generation to the next. But even by the 1930s, German geneticists were aware that many conditions lie dormant for generations. To eradicate them all would take centuries. This was well known, and in fact even Hitler knew. If you read Mein Kampf, you find there a statement that uh, this program will take uh, at least 600 years to, 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 to give a result. But I think again, uh, this, this sounds so, uh, may sound terribly attractive. You are, you are now involved in a project which is really a huge project, which, which goes down the next, the next thousand years. Yeah, wonderful. Was your father right that sterilization would improve the human race? Was he correct that if it had gone on long enough? Uh, that's very difficult uh, to answer. I think at that time, uh, he was uh, right in some way because uh, there were no safe means of contraception, uh, abortion was forbidden, and so uh, this was the only mean uh, to prevent uh, the birth of, of uh, disabled persons. I'm quite convinced that they knew that it was on a very shaky scientific footing, as was pointed out at the time by very, very distinguished scientists in several countries. But they pressed ahead regardless because essentially they were taking, uh, making a gigantic leap of faith. But selective breeding alone was not achieving the obliteration of the disabled from the German population. Hitler turned to another idea proposed by German eugenicists. The notion that, in the name of genetic perfection, it was right to kill the sick and the disabled. Hitler had been talking about killing chronically ill people in his inner circles since about 1935. Uh, sometime in late 38 or early 39, Hitler and um, Karl Brandt, his favorite doctor who became really the head of Nazi medicine, uh, came upon the idea of inviting, uh, inviting requests for mercy deaths. Hitler entrusted Karl Brandt, his personal physician and close confidant, to handle the hunt for a suitable test case. Among the babies at the Leipzig clinic, there was a possible candidate. In the case of the Dauer baby uh, dropped into their lab in 1938, uh, the parents were as members of the SS, the staunch party people, whose child was indeed born with severe disabilities uh, and was uh, housed in the, in the Leipzig clinic. Dr. Eric Hessler was working as a pediatrician at the Leipzig clinic when the deformed baby was born. It happened during a home birth. A child was born without limbs. The mother was so horrified when the midwife held the child up that she screamed, the child has no arms and no legs. So the father took the child from the midwife, took it to the children's hospital and said, we will not take the child back under any circumstances. So now it was in the hospital.
the chancellery brought this case to Hitler, who sent his uh, traveling physician, Karl Brandt, to Leipzig to investigate and, if he is convinced of the seriousness of the disability, to order the killing of the baby. The discussion over what to do with the child was top secret. But Dr. Hessler was the deputy chief of the hospital. He knows what happened when Dr. Brandt saw the baby. And as soon as Brandt had seen the child, he left word for the chief surgeon that whatever measures he took, there would not be any court proceedings. So Hitler gave the permission to perform euthanasia, but it did not give a written order. The deformed baby was murdered in July 1939. Dr. Karl Brandt was sentenced to death at Nuremberg for war crimes and crimes against humanity in 1948. It's a big jump from trying to get rid of all bad genes through sterilization so that the bad genes wouldn't be reproduced between that and actually killing people because they're incurable or too much of a burden on society economically. It was a jump that doctors were willing to make. By 1939, German physicians had made the remarkable transition from healers to killers. Murdering the disabled was rationalized by the Nazis as a way to eliminate what they called lives unworthy of life. Perhaps it's difficult for people in liberal Britain or North America in the 21st century to understand this because we're brought up to think that one must care for um, people who are sick or distressed or homeless or whatever, but the doctors and nurses were operating within an altered moral framework where they were being told that um, these groups of people were essentially despicable and perhaps not fully human and that it was entirely right to feel disgust towards them. Fundamentally, euthanasia is murder. But in grave times of need, exceptional individual cases can occur, and this I cannot condemn. Besides, it's like this. Total idiot children can't be educated. They don't develop. They don't know any words. They only scream. They have to be force-fed somehow, and they'll never be clean. They are often doubly incontinent. Sometimes they smear urine and feces around if they are not tied down. Anything you give to them as a toy, they'll tear apart. These children are idiots. That's the kind of children we are talking about. Almost 5,000 children were killed by German medical staff during the war years. Although Hitler never passed a law regarding the so-called child euthanasia, he personally authorized a committee to decide which children should be killed. Every doctor and midwife in the country had to notify Hitler's committee when a disabled child was born. The killing program was secretly extended to adults. The Nazis built the first gas chambers in Germany to murder almost 100,000 disabled people and psychiatric patients. Eugenics, which had begun as a utopian scientist's promise to improve all of mankind, became the Nazis' rationale for mass murder. The gassing technology would later be used to kill millions in the death camps. are willing to help the patient in this, or if it is properly regulated. Jean-Pierre Ménard was part of a panel of legal experts recommending the new law. He says patients would have to make the requests themselves and it would have to be approved in writing by two separate doctors.